Welcome back, folks, to NL Now. Joining me here now at our interview set is today's interview guest, Pete Susi. Thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure, Clyde. Good to see you. Great yes, to be here. Great to see you, too. Now, Pete, I'm sure that most of our viewers do know who you are, but uh, for those who don't, why don't you give us a bit of an introduction on yourself? Well, I've been in the uh, performing business, I suppose, for over 30 years. I used to be an art teacher many, many years ago. But uh, then I discovered a character that I created uh, called Snook. Yes. And Snook was on TV for many, many years doing his own shows, but also doing uh, commentaries on uh, the evening news mm -hmm. on a couple of stations. And he put out some CDs and some DVDs yes. and uh, had a lot of fun. And just recently, he's put out a new show called Snook Out on Bail. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, I've done other things like some painting and some uh, graphic work for book covers and that sort of thing over yeah. the years and some writing for uh, theater as well. Mm -hmm. So, Snook Out on Bail is your new project for 5TV1. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, it's a 10-episode series. They're about mm -hmm. 10 minutes each. They're usually short shows on 5TV1. Mm -hmm. And this is a story that I thought of um, many years after I kind of stepped back from doing the character. Yes. I'd performed him for about 30 years. And uh, this was an idea I had uh, where I thought maybe he's uh, had a, a bunch of small infractions with the law. He's uh, been uh, ticketed for littering and uh, maybe parking tickets and mm -hmm. speeding tickets. That's, uh, they've built up over the yeah. years. And the judge has finally decided that enough is enough. He's gotten all sorts of fines and warnings. But now it's time to show him they're serious about him not getting any more mm -hmm. in any more trouble. And so they're saying to him, uh, this is it. We're going to have to give you something bigger than a fine and come back in uh, a week or so and uh, we'll find out what that is. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, the judge is an old friend of his, oh. Snook had when he was a, a kid. And he phones Snook up on the slide, which you're not allowed to do, mm -hmm. of course, and says, you know, if you did some community service, if you did some good deeds, maybe I can use that to give you a little lighter sentence. I can be easier on you. You won't have to, you know, do a long uh, time in jail or anything. We can maybe take it easy. Mm -hmm. So he decides he's going to uh, do some good deeds, do some community service, and get his buddy Dougie to record it and show it to the judge when it's uh, his day in court and maybe he'll uh, get away pretty easy. Uh, Dougie unfortunately records what Snook is doing and puts it up on the internet mm -hmm. and it goes viral and lots yeah. of people start watching it and the judge is kind of caught because he's worried the other judges are going to know that this is a friend of his and he probably advised him to do the community service mm -hmm. and he's going to get in trouble himself. So it's a bit of fun. Yes. Uh, we've got some great performers in it. We mm -hmm. had uh, a great time putting it together last summer. And it just came on TV uh, just uh, before Christmas uh, yeah. in 2023. And it's doing very, very well. And it looks like we're going to be doing uh, another season. Oh, well, that's great to hear. Yeah. Now, uh, I believe it had been a little while since we've seen a bigger Snook project like this. So can you tell us about the decision to bring Snook back to TV? Well, I, I kind of thought 30 years was enough performing as somebody else and maybe I'd try to do something else because I used to do all sorts of theater yes. and painting and writing of other kinds. Uh, but the, uh, the man um, that I met at 5-1 said, mm -hmm. I've heard that you do this character Snook. And if you have an idea, we would like you to tell us what it is. Mm -hmm. Pitch it, they call. Yes. Pitching a story. And if we like it, we would like you to consider making a show, a series. And so uh, I did that. I thought, well, maybe he has another uh, story in him mm -hmm. to tell. And uh, it's not like performing live, of course, on yes. TV. You do all the shows in advance and edit them into uh, your episodes. And I always wanted to do a movie. I always thought it'd be great to have a Snook movie. And my friend, Mark Critch, yeah. who everybody knows, mm -hmm. and I had an idea years ago and it would still work if we got the chance. And so I thought, if I do a series, and a lot of people watch the series and like the series, mm -hmm. and maybe do a second season, maybe there will be a way to find the interest and the time to do a movie. Right. So 
it would be a great way to finish off the character mm -hmm. after a long career. And uh, who knows? I have my fingers crossed and we'll yeah. see. It would be a great way to, uh, to bring it all together. For sure. And now, anyone who has watched it already would have noticed, like you mentioned, that there are so many great guest stars and uh, cast members in it who are big names from the province. Do you want to tell us a little about those? Well, it's a very famous actor. There's lots of famous actors from Newfoundland and Labrador, but one is called Bob Joy, and he started out with Codco, yes. a very famous comedy troupe with Mary Walsh mm -hmm. and Andy Jones many, many years ago, Greg Malone. And uh, he went to the United States and ended up on some very, very popular shows like CSI New York, yes. and has had a long and very famous career. He was Madonna's boyfriend in uh, a movie many years ago called mm -hmm. Desperately Seeking Susan. So he's done all sorts of things and he's on a new series now uh, called Julia. Uh, he flew all the way from New York to be the judge wow. in my show and I was so happy and proud and he is fantastic. He is mm -hmm. a tremendous actor and he uh, did us a real favor by coming back to be in the show. But Greg Malone yes. from Codco as well is in the series and he plays the uh, correctional officer that accompanies Dougie on day passes to get mm -hmm. out of the penitentiary to take the videos of Snook. And uh, we have Petrina Bromley who is mm -hmm. in Come From Away in New York yes. City. A lot of people know uh, Petrina. Uh, lots of guest stars like uh, Mark Critch made mm -hmm. his appearance on the show. Uh, also, um, Amy House is in there for uh, one episode, mm -hmm. and lots and lots of other people that uh, people would uh, recognize. And a friend of mine, uh, John Sheen, I don't know if you've had John Sheen on your show, but he's a very funny comedian, mm -hmm. and he plays Dougie. Now, Dougie is my buddy that nobody ever sees, but in this series, he's the one supposed to be taking all the video on his mm -hmm. phone, and you kind of see him, you see his hand come in to shake hands sometimes, you hear him grunt and he moves the camera, and you see him from behind, from the mm -hmm. side, so you almost get to see Dougie, uh, but not quite, but it is John Sheen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that's great, Pete, and uh, folks at home, we're gonna take a, a very short commercial break right now, but when we come back, we'll have a little bit more with Pete Susi. Welcome back, folks, to NL Now here on NTV. And joining me once again from before the commercial break is Pete Susie. And now, uh, Pete, something I've always been curious about is the beginnings of Snook and uh, where the character actually came from. I was given a role in a play many years ago. I'm thinking it was 1989. I'm old. And uh, the character was a corner boy, as they called mm -hmm. these guys, like Snook. A guy who hangs out and just makes fun of people and has a good time and doesn't really do a whole lot of anything mm -hmm. outside of having fun. Yes. And I, I didn't grow up in St. John's, and certainly mm -hmm. not downtown St. John's. I grew up in Gander. So I had to go see a friend of mine whose name is Dougie. And he grew up downtown, and I asked him a bunch of questions about who this character should be and what he might sound like and how he would move and how he would laugh. And then I went home with all of his information and uh, got in front of the mirror and started to uh, try out some walks and some mm -hmm. laughs. And he'd make a face and look serious and then look happy and laugh. <laughs> and uh, practiced it for a while and got the laugh down pretty good. And uh, so I developed him as we rehearsed that play. Mm -hmm. And it went very well. Now he had a different name in the play. Okay. And I had all my own clothes. I kind of put them together myself. And uh, it, the play went over really well. It was very popular and I got calls right away. People wanted me to come and entertain at uh, their event for mm -hmm. some after dinner speaking, some comedy. And so I wrote some material and uh, very quickly uh, got some interest in the character and then got a, a chance to be on TV right. and that went really well and then I got a call from CBC who wanted me to go on and do a commentary because they had people doing commentaries almost every night on the news back in those days and so I started doing commentaries and did commentaries for CBC for maybe uh, three years or so and uh, then they were kind of changing their 
programming a little bit and right. weren't doing so many commentaries, but then NTV called me mm -hmm. and wanted me to do commentaries for them. And I think I did commentaries for NTV for maybe 10 or 12 years mm -hmm. every week, two and a half minute commentary. Probably all together I did about almost 400 commentaries. And uh, I thought he might uh, be around for two weeks, two months. Mm -hmm ended up being 30 over 30 years mm -hmm. so kind of turned it in to a career yes and I uh, feel very lucky uh, it was very uh, a good fortune and I'm grateful for having had such a long career where I've had fun I like to say I haven't worked a day since I stopped teaching because <laughs> I guarantee you teaching is hard work yes <laughs> Now, Pete, something else that I uh, learned about you recently was how great of a painter you were. Uh, I was watching another program that you did called Island Nights, if you could chat about that one a little bit. Yeah, that's another series I did just last year. Um, it's six episodes, 15-minute episodes, and these are episodes where I paint a portrait of a person I really admire, mm -hmm. the people I call my own personal Jedi Knights. Yes. Uh, people like Gordon Pinsent and Jerry Squires and um, uh, Petrina Bromley. Mm -hmm. And um, I hadn't painted for a long time, maybe 35 years. Yeah. But I always had this idea that it would be nice to do uh, some shows where I paint portraits and tell uh, the viewing audience about the person I'm painting and do mm -hmm. some interviews with friends yeah. and family and colleagues so that you got to know not only what they did as artists, as either a writer or a painter or a musician, mm -hmm. but you got to know who they were as, uh, as people, as human beings, and how much they gave back to the community and helped other people in the uh, arts community. Yeah. And, and I thought these would be great uh, resource uh, materials for the classroom, for, mm -hmm. for teachers. Um, and I hope they do end up being uh, used by the Department of Education because uh, these people, a couple of them are, are gone now. Mm -hmm. uh, sadly, um, a couple have, have passed on. And uh, I think that new uh, and uh, coming artists, uh, emerging artists in school and, uh, and shortly after school need to know who some very important people were in the various disciplines of the uh, of the creative arts. So um, I'm hoping to do more of those portraits and programs yes. as well because I think they will be helpful in remembering and reminding people who uh, these people were and how much they contributed to uh, our arts community. We'll be back with more NL Now right after this. Now, uh, this here in 2024 in Newfoundland and Labrador is uh, well, pro proclaimed as the Year of the Arts by our provincial government. Now, how does it feel to see the government taking initiatives such as this one to support our arts community? It's terrific. It is a, a great thing they've done. Mm -hmm. And they've come up with uh, a lot of extra money to help uh, artists do programs or yep. projects. And uh, it's important to recognize what the arts gives this province because mm -hmm. we're very creative. We are known across the country and beyond Canada as a, a place where an awful lot of uh, musicians and mm -hmm. visual artists and writers and filmmakers, all the disciplines have a lot of people. And you see uh, in Canada a lot of uh, people with very important positions like Mark Critch and yes. Ellen Hocko and uh, Tom Power who mm -hmm. hosts a, a big radio uh, program on CBC um, and our writers are very famous uh, worldwide. Uh, as they say, we punch well above our weight in this province. We have a lot more people for our population than most places yeah. doing extremely well and doing big things and inspiring lots of other people. So it makes sense mm -hmm. to uh, support the arts and to uh, celebrate the arts and the artists of this province because they do so much and uh, give us our great reputation and inspire a lot of people to visit mm -hmm. here. Uh, they're very interested in this place because they've seen and heard and read so much about it and en enjoyed what our artists have produced. Yes, yeah. great. And uh, now, Pete, we're going to do a little thing we like to do with all of our guests on the show. It's a little game called Get to Know Me. 
So uh, I'll ask you five questions and you'll come back with the first answer that pops into your head. Okay, I'm ready. Your favorite food? My favorite food would be uh, halibut. Mm. Your I'm favorite? a big fish fan and halibut is my favorite fish. Your favorite color? Mm. My favorite color? Yellow, because it's uh, bright and cheerful mm -hmm, and it, it makes people happy. I think I'll have to agree with you on yellow. Yes, yeah, it's very nice mm -hmm. color, Clyde. Your favorite thing to do in your spare time? I do like to paint, mm -hmm. I like to write, and lately I like to uh, play guitar. I'm learning to play guitar. Finally, after all these years, mm -hmm. I finally have the time yes. to uh, learn a little bit of guitar. Mm -hmm. And if you could pick any actor or performer to collaborate with on a project that you haven't worked with before, who would you pick? Probably Martin Short or Steve Martin, mm -hmm. two of my childhood heroes. Yes. Uh, I always thought they were great, and they work together, of course. Yes, They're big, course. Uh, big fans of each other. So mm -hmm. I would probably uh, reach out to one of those guys, or yeah. both of them. That'd be great to see. Yeah. And finally, your favorite thing about living in Newfoundland and Labrador? The weather. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say uh, what I love about living here, and really, Clyde, you have to live somewhere else before you really understand mm -hmm. and know what it is about this place that makes it magic for yes. you. It's the sense of humor, it's the attitude people have that we are here for a good time, not a long time. Mm -hmm. And there's a good thing in our character, our comedy and our character here in this province. It's a the what odds kind of attitude. People mm -hmm. don't take things too seriously. They always expect humor in every conversation. Yes. They're lighter than people perhaps elsewhere in the country and, and in the world. Mm -hmm. People just understand that fun is important and being kind and friendly to each other and warm to each other is the, perhaps the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Well, Pete, that all sounded great and uh, it's been wonderful having you here today, but we are out of time right now. So I'd like to thank you for coming in and joining us. I thank you. It's been fun as usual. I love your studio. Oh, thank very you. fancy, mm -hmm. very professional, and I'd love to come back anytime you want me. Yes, of course. Well, folks at home, please be sure to check out Pete Soucy in Snook out on bail, available now on 5 TV One. And uh, we'll be right back after this very short commercial break. So please stay tuned for after these messages. We've got a song from NL Now's own Lawrence Moody.
How can I leave those mornings with the sunrise on the cold and the gulls that fly surrounding Clayton's Wharf? Platter's Island wrapped in rainbow in the evening after fog. The ocean smells a perfume to my soul. Some go to where the building. Gentle people turn to swarm and faceless crowds, so I'll do without their riches, the glamour, and the noise, and I'll stay and take my chances with those salt water joys. Some go to where the buildings reach to meet the clouds. The warm and gentle people turn to swarm and faceless crowds. So I